This is the bombshell. We've discovered a letter from you, Fanny, in your capacity as the DA to Liz Cheney from December 2021. Liz is like, ah, I thought we deleted those. We want to know what you said to Mark Meadows. We want to know what you said to Tony Ornato. This is the guy who rebuts Cassidy's claims. We want to also talk to the White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, or know what you talked to him about. How about Bobby Engel, another Secret Service agent who denies Hutchinson's story? So if you talk to these people, then you would know that her story is BS. So why do you encourage her to then make it? Fanny Willis, Cassidy Hutchinson, Spice Girl, TDSer, Alyssa Farah, all colluding. We already knew this was happening, but now Congress is inquiring and digging in further. We have Representative Barry Loudermilk with this press release calling on Fulton County DA Fanny Willis to give us the goods. What did Fanny say when she was talking with Cassidy Hutchinson? And you remember Cassidy Hutchinson, known here lovingly as Clavicle Girl. She is the woman whose story changed and on the fourth time, I believe it was, that she met with Liz Cheney. And she told us that Trump reached into the car of the beast, tried to grab the clavicle of the driver of the car to take him over to the January 6th event at the Capitol. Turns out that was not true. Other people never heard anything like that. The people who were in the car said that never happened. And so now she has been promoted, paraded around like a hero of the left, almost a caricature, this role model, this figure, even though the whole thing is fake. So Loudermilk now wants to dig into this because apparently Fannie Willis was also involved in this scam. He's now requesting that DA Fannie disclose communications with Cassidy. Individuals from the Fulton County DA's office reached out to Hutchinson's mother as well. We now know that they got information that the DA's office attempted to contact Cassidy to get her testimony in the Fannie Rico case. They even called her mama. And the story is that they discovered a letter from Willis to the select committee in 2021. That's Liz Cheney's committee. Willis requested access to a bunch of other records as they investigated their case. There were multiple phone calls with Fannie's office and the J6 committee, but Cheney and Thompson failed to properly archive any of these records, which should be criminal. It should be the destruction of business records, the destruction of congressional records, the destruction of government archives. The subcommittee must now audit all potential collusion between these two, and so they are digging into it now. Cassidy Hutchinson, the subject of this investigation, and she's not alone. The other TDS Spice Girl, this woman here, Alyssa Farah Griffin, also is getting a letter inquiring about her role in the investigations now that she has become a useful tool of the left as well. So here is what the letter looks like. This is from Representative Barry Loudermilk, Subcommittee on Oversight from Congress, going over to Fannie Willis. Her case is now on hold. Sorry, Fannie. Trial's not going before the election. May not even be going after the election if she is booted from the case, as she should have been from the beginning. For some reason, McAfee couldn't find the stones to do the right legal thing, but here we are. So now Fannie is getting these letters from Congress. It says, Dear Miss Willis, Big Fannie, I write to you today to request your cooperation to determine what happened with the security failures on J6. Now, we've received information that leads us to believe that you, Big Fanny, interviewed clavicle girl Cassidy. She provided testimony to Liz in the J6 committee, and what we've learned is that the testimony provided by Cassidy in the course of your investigation, Fanny, is relevant to our investigation, and so we needed information. Now, I have jurisdiction over this and over the safety and security of the Capitol. It's been made evident to us that the select committee from Liz, who should be prosecuted for this destruction of evidence, failed to turn over all their records related to their investigation. House rules require them to do it. They didn't. They put it in the shredder after they sent it to the White House. Further, as the subcommittee continues our investigation, we must assess the truthfulness of the testimony that the select committee relied on during their investigation, which includes Cassidy's testimony. It's therefore imperative that we review any records in Fulton County's possession that were acquired from Hutchinson and from the J6 select committee. So as part of our investigation, this is the bombshell. We've discovered a letter from you, Fanny, in your capacity as the DA to Liz Cheney from December 2021. Liz is like, ah, I thought we deleted those. In this letter, you requested access to any select committee records relevant to your office's investigation of Trump and 2020. You also wanted recordings and transcripts of witness interviews and depots and electronic and print records and records of travel. You wanted everything. Politico also reported that your staff at your office met with and had multiple calls with the J6 committee as well. And in the J6 committee's final report, they also confirmed their close relationship with your office, Fanny. And they wrote that they are, quote, aware that both the USDOJ and the Fulton County DA's office have already obtained
obtained information relevant to these matters, including from the J6 committee directly. And so now Loudermilk wants to know where those records are. Says, I now seek the same cooperation from you since you worked with their committee. Hopefully you're working with ours, Big Fanny. We'll see. We've obtained evidence that your office made numerous attempts to reach out to Cassidy Hutchinson. Specifically, individuals from your office also contacted Cassidy's mama. The subcommittee is evaluating the reliability of her testimony, which is not, which was heavily relied on by the select committee and findings related to the Capitol. It's crucial for us to review these documents that have come from Hutchinson. And so accordingly, I ask you to respond 13 days from now. Did anyone affiliated with the Fulton County, your office, Fanny, including Nathan Wade, who's no longer there, did they communicate with Miss Hutchinson at any time between J1 2021 and June 5, 2024? Answer, yes or no. The answer to the question is yes. Give me the names of the individuals who talked to her and the dates. And additionally, please provide my staff copies of the communications to aid in our investigation. If you have any questions, let me know. Sincerely, Barry Loudermilk, Chairman, Oversight Committee. So, Oversight on House Administration. So, nice letter to Clavicle Girl, but she's not alone. Alyssa Farah, who was the press secretary for Mike Pence. You've seen her on The View a bunch and elsewhere. She flipped. She decided it was going to be very profitable to be on the anti-Trump train. So after J6, she went, became BFFs with Liz Cheney, jumped on, and now makes a career out of it. So yeah, so now during her testimony, Cassidy Hutchinson claimed that Griffin agreed to act as her back channel. So they're all working together, right? All these TDS Spice Girls are all texting each other in their group chats with their emojis and whatever. Oh, so Griffin joined CNN in 2021 after J6 as a contributor, and she's been now a permanent co-host of The View, where she just rips on Trump. She's made a whole career about it. So, all right, so that's who she is. Now, she also, part of this scam, gets a letter from Barry Loudermilk. Same basic premise here, but let's see what they talk about here. Now, it's imperative, Miss Farah, that we learn about what happened here. Now, according to public reports and numerous sit-down interviews, Cassidy Hutchinson Clavicle Girl, she wrote a memoir. She wrote this book called Enough. So apparently you spoke to her about her testimony at the J6 committee and a review of the documents that were provided by the select committee resulted in questions about the truth of her testimony. She specifically cites her conversations with you as one reason that her story changed so dramatically. So remember, Liz Cheney met with Cassidy Hutchinson. I believe the story is four times. First three times, we never had this attack story, never came out. Then the fourth time, suddenly, oh, there's an attack that happened. Liz Cheney called an emergency book report session and the media came out and she stood up there in her white clothes, took an oath and said, Trump attacked me. Trump attacked the driver in the clavicle. How'd that happen? For example, in her book Enough, Miss Hutchinson claims that you, Griffin, you talked over her options and you agreed to contact Liz Cheney on her behalf about scheduling another interview. She then talked about in her book that during this conversation, she shared that the J6 committee, quote, never asked if she went to the Oval Office or the dining room on J6 or whether she heard about Trump's reaction to the rioters. According to Mark Meadows, Trump said, quote, he deserves it. That's from your book, Cassidy. These stories Cassidy has later claimed to have been privy to were never discussed prior to this meeting at your Georgetown row house. There are no text, emails, verbal exchanges that have ever been verified where Ms. Hutchinson discussed these explosive claims apart from your conversation before testifying to the committee. So there's no corroborating evidence at all. And so therefore, Alyssa, we want to know if it's true. And so do Due to your proximity and your influence, apparently she changed her whole story after she talked to you. You're going to facilitate this communication. Her testimony changed so drastically, we'd like to confirm that it's true. I believe that you may have important information. So to aid in our investigation, I'd like the following. First of all, all communications between you and Liz Cheney from June 3rd, 30th to June 4th, over three years. We want all communications with you, Spice Girl Alyssa, from the special agent to the president, legislative affairs, Cassidy Hutchinson as well. We want to know what you said to Mark Meadows. We want to know what you said to Tony Ornato. This is the guy who rebuts Cassidy's claims. We want to also talk to the White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, or know what you talked to him about. How about Bobby Engel, another Secret Service agent who denies Hutchinson's story? So if you talk to these people, then you would know that her story is BS. So why do you encourage her to then make it? We want communications with any Secret Service people for Mark Meadows or Trump, copies of all your phone logs from these periods. We want your calendars maintained. We want your references to Cassidy. Hutchinson, if you ever mentioned her at all 
all. We want to know about it. If you mentioned it about her employment, we want to talk about her public and private testimony. If you ever mentioned J6, all communications about the 25th Amendment. Whoo, this is a long list. Anything referencing her book, Cassidy's book. If you ever talked to Fanny's office, if you ever talked to Fanny's representatives, we want any information from the select committee, the DOJ, any congressional or law enforcement interview at all. We want everything. If you even thought about Cassidy, we want to know. Additionally, the subcommittee request that you make yourself available, Alyssa, for a transcribed interview at our office in DC. I ask that you contact my office to arrange mutually agreeable date and time and give us all these details by June 18th. We thank you for your cooperation. Sincerely, your friend, Barry Loudermilk. Woo, good. So if, if the Democrat Congress and Liz Cheney and Benny Thompson and Shifty Schiff and Kinzinger and the rest of them, if they can throw their weight around and send letters like this, which they did, Benny Thompson sent letters that were 15, 20 pages like this. Endlessly. We covered and read through many of them here. Republicans can do it too. Go after these people who colluded to create fake stories and fake lies to sell their political narrative to the rest of us. So great stuff from Representative Barry Loudermill calling on massive disclosures from Fannie, from Cassidy, from Alyssa. And if they get it, hopefully they do. I believe we'll see more evidence of this collusion. Why did they delete the records before they left, before they handed control back over to the Republicans? Because they didn't want us to see how they were recreating their fictional narrative. So more will be revealed. Thankfully, we have a few Republicans like Loudermilk who are continuing to dig into this. Truth will continue to come out. We'll be here continuing to cover it. Thank you for subscribing, my friends, and liking this video wherever it is you're watching it. Really appreciate you sharing it with a friend or family member. If you enjoyed this segment, we got a great segment coming up now. We're going over to Florida in our next video, and we're going to see what Jim Jordan says. He's demanding Jay Bratt, the Florida Oompa Loompa, come in and testify. So we're going to check that one out. I hope you join us in our next segment. We'll see you right over there.